Today, we're going to be talking about what is arguably the most technically demanding game ever made. A spaghetti-coded game from Korea that transcended all of the boundaries set by its developers. A cult classic that survived for more than a decade without any outside support. It's a third-person shooter slash fighting game, and it's just about one of the fastest games you're ever gonna see. This is Guns, The Duel. Guns is a straightforward online third-person shooter. Players could use a combination of guns and swords to battle against each other, using martial arts-inspired combat to emulate classic action movies. The concept was pretty dope. The execution, not so much. It wasn't until nearly three years after the game's initial release that Guns was made available outside of Korea in 2006. Hosted internationally by IJJI, the same company that hosted games like Soldier Front and Alliance of Valiant Arms, when the rest of the world got their hands on the game, it was not very well received. People's biggest gripe was the game's clearly unfinished state, but for the game's dedicated player base, and those who put the time in to really understand its mechanics, the bad reviews really didn't matter. Because under its unpolished exterior is one of the most technically demanding games you will ever see. The first move a lot of players learned was called the butterfly. And in the normal game, you have all these actions available to you. Um, so to perform a butterfly, you would do a jump, slash, dash, and block. All those moves are moves coded into the game, but people found out if you time certain things correctly, if you are able to hit your block animation right after you hit a slash animation, you can kind of do this really cool thing where you're flying around the map super fast while doing an offensive and a defensive action at the same time. So if you just learn that ability alone, it kind of puts you in a different tier above everyone else. But then take everything I just said and you can multiply that times literally a hundred, maybe a thousand, and your skill level just goes up with every move that you add to your arsenal. While Guns, as a game, was pretty rough, players were able to use the holes in the game's code to develop K-Style, or Korean Style, a mode of fighting built around cancelling animations in order to perform moves at lightning speed. This style of gameplay was absolutely not intended by the game's developers, but the techniques that players discovered pushed guns to a whole new level of difficulty. Over time, moves were discovered and layered on top of each other, as players slowly untangled the mess of code that allowed them an uncharacteristic level of freedom. The unique gameplay and the high skill ceiling fostered a tight-knit community. But what really made guns a competitive powerhouse was the introduction of clan battles. Clan battles were the lifeblood of the competitive scene and were all about honor and prestige. Players built their identities around the clans that they played in. On a clan's profile, the clan's win-loss ratio, their worldwide ranking, and their total points were displayed for the public to see. The sense of ego in trying to preserve your clan's ranking made players all the more competitive as your credibility in the scene was predicated on being in a good clan. The official clan rankings would reset monthly, meaning that every month, clans would scramble to get as many wins as possible in hopes of being in the top 100 and immortalized in the Guns Hall of Fame. But clan battles weren't the only thing that kept the competitive scene moving forward. The complicated movesets and the robust customization options allowed for a great deal of expression in skill and personality. Unfortunately, the ability to purchase better equipment with real money meant that many games were decided not by who was the better player, but who had the biggest wallet. Worse yet, the items expired over time, requiring continuous investment if you wanted to stay overpowered. Still, the community loved their game, and fans still reminisce over the adrenaline-fueled gaming sessions nearly two decades later. For the majority of the years on EG, for that five or so years, you could find a match any time of day, wouldn't be a problem. There was a point where you would see over 20,000 online at its very peak, maybe that first summer when all the kids were off school, that like summer 2007 or so. Um, but even all the way till its death, um, probably 2,000 players online toward the end there. So what led to the failure of such a special game? The non-traditional gameplay and the insanely steep learning curve kept casual gamers from fully committing, but the real nail in the coffin was developer neglect. With a number of ridiculously OP pay-to-win strategies, along with hackers infesting the game's official servers, it was up to the community to build private servers to keep the competitive scene alive. What this meant, unfortunately, was that unless you had access to these private servers, your experience in guns was likely to be frustrating and short-lived. 
guns did not have dedicated servers, and instead utilized peer-to-peer -peer connection with a host. So playing against someone who is moderately far away meant that the host, and anyone closer to the host, would have an immense advantage over more distant opponents. The problems really started when the game's source code surfaced on the internet. Access to the source code meant that the game was ridiculously easy to hack. The ability to play on community-hosted servers meant that the game would live long beyond the time that Mayet was willing to support it. But Guns was an older game, and Mayet was looking to the future. In 2011, a Korean beta was opened for Guns 2. Guns 2 was one of the most successful campaigns in the history of Steam Greenlight, and was a chance to refine and re-establish the accidental successes of the original title. Unfortunately, Mayat decided to go the generic shooter route and make the game as bland as possible. The base game for the original Guns was not all that exciting. What kept it alive all those years were the techniques and exploits that accelerated the game to insane speeds. By removing all of those, Mayat made something that was utterly forgettable. The sequel meant the end of the original title's support, and also split up the core community as some went to the new title while others stayed with the original. Finally, in 2015, the IP was taken over by a different company altogether, and Guns was stuck in the deep freezer of maintenance mode. But while developer support was cut off, there were still a couple thousand players keeping the flame alive in private servers. What kept the community alive for so long, you might ask? It's a combination of things. First is the clan system. For years, players had built and cultivated these long-standing clans. There had been rivalries, camaraderie, and a sense of loyalty that was difficult to step away from. Second is the sheer depth of the game. Spending years of your life honing your skills in a martial arts video game is no small feat and those who were among the best wouldn't give up so easily. So you have your character, obviously. So in-game, my character would be known as Kadai, and I started my own clan in guns called Thief. I had my team of four or so core members that were in Thief, and we would get recognized because we would consistently be ranked in like the top, I don't know, 10 to 20, depending on the month. And because of that, because you're on the leaderboard so often, they see like people start to recognize you. And it's, it's even more so for the clans that can get rank 1 every month. Over the next few years, Guns was in a lull. Yes, there were still people playing it, but the community wasn't growing or getting anything new. But that all changed in early 2021, when a video essay by Kadai Gaming went viral. Suddenly, big name streamers began trying the game out, YouTubers were putting out content, and pretty quickly, a whole new generation of gamers were starting to play, and old veterans were returning. The International Guns website or iGuns, launched on June 8th, 2021, with almost 9,000 players ranked at the time of this video, and multiple matches running at any given time. Unlike other private servers, iGuns removed the pay-to-win elements from the Guns experience, allowing for an even playing field among newcomers and veterans alike. This barebones experience is part of why longtime Guns players vouch for iGuns over other private server options. If you've never played Guns, I want to make one thing clear. This game is not easy. There's a steep learning curve, but once you begin to learn the combos, you will truly fall in love with this game. The best server to play on is iGuns.net. It's the only populated server that is completely free to play, and I'd love to see some of you guys on there. Feel free to whisper me in game if you see me anytime. Today, we get to ask the question that never would have made sense in the early 2000s. Could Guns truly be an eSport? The skill and the spectacle are there, the early successes of the revival efforts and the interest from the community show that there's definite spectator appeal to the game. Still, the best chance for a competitive scene lies in a spiritual sequel of sorts, something that even the most ardent fans of the original are happy to acknowledge. Whatever the future for Guns may hold, 2021 has proved that there's still a lively community around the game and all the potential for an esports scene in the near future. Do you agree that it's one of the most technical games ever made? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Jason, B, Brendan, Foxy, Iron, Lyra, Mauve, Nate, Nathan, Sierra, Shampoo, Weeaboo, Spartacus, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters, and an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, Marco, and Mookie for being Diamond supporters. We appreciate you all. If you also want to support our channel and unlock perks, 
check out the Patreon link in the description below or join our Discord server. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.